hat and his black and white cat. Early in the morning, just as day is dawning, he picks up all the post bags in his van. Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Everybody knows his bright red van. All his friends will smile as he waves to greet them. Maybe you can never be sure there'll be knock, ring, letters through your door. <laughs> postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. All the birds are singing and the day is just beginning. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. Pat feels he's a really happy man. What lovely weather for people on holiday, said Pat. Every summer, lots of visitors came to Greendale to walk in the hills and camp in the valley. They were talking about the visitors when Pat arrived to collect the day's post. Morning, Mrs. Goggins. Fine day. Morning, Pat. Yes, and a busy one, too. Plenty of post for the visitors. The Jacksons are staying up at Birkhow Cottage. There are some letters for them, so don't forget the extra call, will you, Pat? Oh, yes, and there's a registered letter for those campers up at Southland's farm. They'll have to sign for that. I do hope you catch them in. And a parcel for Granny Dryden. I wonder what that can be. <laughs> it's a busy time with all these people on holiday, said Pat. I'll be glad when it's my holiday. <laughs> Have a good day, Pat. I will. Cheerio. Morning, Miss Hubbard. Morning, Pat. his letters all along the valley. At Birkhow Cottage, the Jacksons were away, but someone had left the gate open. And something unfortunate happened. By the time Peter Fogg found the sheep, it was too late. When Pat arrived with the letters, he saw the sheep in the garden and decided to help. He'd chased sheep before. What a mess, said Peter. 
I don't know what Mr Jackson will say. It isn't your fault, said Pat. People should close gates properly. I bet they won't do that again. No. Anyway, thanks for helping. Cheerio. The next stop was at Granny Dryden's cottage. She was so pleased to see her parcel, she opened it there and then. It was her new catalogue from Manchester. It was full of pictures of things to buy. Is there anything you'd like to order? Let's have a look. Ah. He chose a digital watch with a musical alarm. That's a funny watch. It doesn't look like a watch at all to me. Oh, it's a good one. It's a good one. It doesn't even need winding. It'll help to keep me on time. Goodbye. Pat was on his way. He had to go up the hill to Intake Farm with a letter for George Lancaster. George didn't often get letters, so he was very pleased to see this one. Um, you'll be passing the campers, won't you? said George. Could you take them some eggs? Yes, that's all right. I've got a letter for them, so I'll have to stop there anyway. George went for the eggs. What beauties, said Pat. I must take care not to drop them, especially if they're all in one basket. Cheerio! Hello? Anyone at home? That's a nuisance. They must have gone off for a walk. Well, I can tuck the eggs under here. They'll be all right. But what about this registered letter? I can't leave that. It looks too valuable. And they'll have to sign for it. I wonder if Miss Hubbard knows where they've gone. Miss Hubbard's cottage was just across the field, so Pat walked over to see if she was at home. He was lucky. she just cycled back from the village. Pat told her about the special letter. She knew where the campers were, all right. They've gone off to see the Gategill waterfalls, she said. They asked me the way this morning. Oh, dear. That's at least six miles, and my van can't go along that old track. I'll borrow a tractor from the farm, said Miss Hubbard. Uh, I can't drive a tractor. Don't worry, I can. 
and off she went for the tractor. Pat wasn't sure that he wanted to ride on a tractor, but there was no other way. So he climbed on and off they went. It was a very exciting ride and a rough one in places. Hold on tight. Oh, that hurts. Oh, heck. Oh. Oh, hey, up. Careful. Only two more miles to go. Oh, thank goodness for that. Pat was glad when they stopped, but when he climbed down, he was almost too stiff and sore to take the letter to the campers. And then they had to go all the way back again. Pat was glad when at last he got back to his van. But what was Jess looking at in the back? It was one of George Lancaster's hens. It had got in somehow and laid an egg. She'll have to stay there until tomorrow, said Pat. But the egg, the egg will do nicely for my tea. Pat was on his way home when he spotted a sheep stuck in a fence. So he stopped to let it out. I think that's my last job for today, he said. And off he went. He waved as he passed the Thompsons. They were still hard at work haymaking. Goodbye, Pat. See you tomorrow. <laughs> Postman Pat, Postman Pat, Postman Pat and his black and white cat. Boom, 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 bo